Yeah, it's Monday night, and you know what Monday night means. Monday night mayhem. That's right, yeah, it's Monday night mayhem. Uh, yeah, so this, this month we're giving away a, an entry to the Bill Wright St. Louis Open, so that's a $100 value. It's a really fun prize, so whatever position you see up here tonight, uh, that's going to be the opening that you'll play. So you play one game every Monday night for the, uh, the course of the month. And uh, it's good. We had uh, 13 participants in the, the last round, so it's uh, the biggest one yet. It's continuing to grow, and the prize funds keep getting better and better. So free to enter, unrated. Come on out. Come on out. It's Monday nights are what it's all about around here. Uh, okay, so tonight, oh, I don't have my paper to, to say who recommended this opening, but uh, all right, but it's, it's something that a lot of people have requested recently, so tonight we're going to go over the Nimzo Indian. And okay, the Nimzo Indian begins after the move d4, knight f6, which we'll see there's a battle going on for the whole course of this game here for the e4 square. So c4, and now how will black continue to uh, fight for this? Well, white's plan is he's going to put a knight on c3. Now he's ready to play the move e4. So black could play a move uh, like d5 and transpose to the queen's gambit declined. And the other way is bishop to b4, and this is the Nimzo Indian. So pinning the knight prevents white from playing the move e4, and uh, so the battle begins. And OK, in this position, there's already several ways. e3 is a very common way to play. Um, it's you know one of the two main lines, so hopefully we get to do that in the near future too. F3 is also a, a possible move here, but tonight we're going to look at the move queen to c2, and this is the classical variation, and it's gone in and out of favor um, as openings tend to do. You know, some openings they stay popular for a while and they go out of fashion, um, but around the 90s, uh, Gary Kasparov he kind of brought this back. He started playing it with great success. And since then, you know, it's been the most popular way to play this at, uh, at all levels. You'll see it here in the club. You'll see it, you know, at top grandmaster level. Just a very common move. So this is where we, we're going to begin tonight. Uh, the point of queen to c2 is at some point we're going to play a3. And you're going to, you know, take my knight. And I'll be able to take back with the queen and not ruin my pawn structure. So what white's going to do is he's going to collect the two bishops. That's always going to be his big trump in these lines. And why would black do this? Well, he gets something in return, too, and that's development. Queen c2 isn't the best developing move. It's not like he brought another knight out or got ready to get some of his minor pieces out. So it's going to cost him a little bit of time, and we'll see if black can do anything uh, with his development advantage to turn it into some more serious advantage. And that's the battle that will go on. So if black does nothing here, uh, white plays a3 and, and collects the bishop pair. Uh, so we're going to cover three different moves, actually, tonight. Um, the first game will go over the most popular move which is castling. So a very logical move, right? In the first four moves, you got your pieces out and you castled. So it doesn't get much more logical than that. And then he'll be ready to open up the center. All right. Also, we're going to take a quick look tonight at the move c5, which is an interesting way to exploit the fact that the d4 pawn was no longer protected. Uh, and there's a, a piece sack line that hasn't really gotten a lot of coverage. So we're going to go over that. It's a very, very exciting game. So we'll check that one out. And I should briefly mention, there is another move that's not played nearly as often as the first two moves. But it can lead to very, very sharp complications. So it's a lot of fun. We'll take a look at the move d5. OK? Right, so this is a logical attempt to uh, take advantage of your development lead. And OK, I'm intending just to take your c4 pawn. So if you do nothing, I'm going to take your pawn. If you have to play a move like e3, which has been played by Carlson on at least three occasions. So it's not like it's you know, a bad move or anything. But it's, it does block in your bishop on c1. So that's not really ideal. But yeah, if you, you know, just develop one of your pieces or something, I am taking on c4. Uh, so white will typically deal with this by taking on d5 himself, which is a slight concession. Because after black takes back, his bishop has now been liberated. So he's got that going for him. And OK, white can can play this move. And it might seem like it's a, a bit of a banal position. It's going to be kind of boring. Uh, I don't see any fireworks coming. We've got kind of a static pawn structure here. But there's some very serious complications that can arise. And they have to do with black playing the move c5 here or on the next move. Uh, the most common move is h6. And white must make a choice. Going back to h4 is the most complicated. We'll look at it. He also can play kind of you know a little bit more boring. 
Uh, he can just take this and kind of get rid of his advantage. His advantage was going to be the two bishops. And so, I mean, giving it away kind of leads to a dry position. But if you're in an aggressive fighting mood, bishop to h4. And because black hasn't castled yet, he's not afraid in some positions to play g5 and then follow it up with knight to e4. So we're going to see this. But first, he strikes at the center with the move c5. And it's kind of annoying how you had to deal with this. Um, I mean, you don't really think you can play e3, because after you take, now black can consider you know, throwing in either g5 or the queen check. But even after like knight to c6, it's kind of uncomfortable. How are you going to defend your d4 pawn? So the most common reply here is to take on c5. And in the Nimzo Indian, you don't want to be afraid to play d take c5. It's, uh, it's something that's going to occur quite often. And even though you are taking away from the center, black is going to have to take the time to pick up your c5 pawn now in the future. And OK, it does sometimes give you the d4 square for your pieces. Like here, you know, a knight, you can imagine, wants the d4 square. Um, OK, so what's going on here? Um, first of all, what happens if we attack a pinned piece? This is not a very good move, but uh, who can tell me why? Mm-hmm. The, the knight can't move, you mean? Yeah, are we just going to lose a piece here? Did white blunder? How can white save himself? He's got to find the right move here. Got to be careful. You have it? OK. And then, yeah, right, so he can either move away or he can take your knight. OK, so that's, that is one solution. But you have an even stronger move. Do you have it? Queen a4 check. Queen a4 check. OK. This is interesting, but I think after I defend my bishop, your knight's still in a pin, so I'm going to take it on the next move. So even better. But let's go. We're getting a lot of, a lot of suggestions. Yes, excellent, yeah. Yeah, if you just castled, now this is uh, pretty nice for white. You're going to be able to go round up this pawn in the, the near future. So. Yeah, after this, white would have an advantage. So he's not really threatening to play d4, but it's something you want to think about. You know, you don't want your, your piece to get attacked. Uh, OK, so most players with black, now they will play g5. And after you retreat, knight to e4. With a lot of pressure on your position. So black is moving the pawns on both sides of the board, but he's trying to get a lot of pressure on white before he has a chance to get developed, which is sort of uh, the essential point of playing this variation. So. We might be able to take your bishop. We might be able to get a little bit more pressure on the knight. You know, we're going to bring our queen out pretty soon. Uh, so what is going on here? So the main move here, e3. And he puts more pressure on the position. So if white survives you know, the next few moves, if he doesn't get attacked and you know, just slaughtered right away, then he's going to end up with a really nice position, because black has weaknesses on both sides of the board and even in the center. So <clears throat> will black get enough? This is the, the big thing. And the most common move here, because now your knight is attacked three times, is to play knight g to e2. But this is something that happens a lot in chess. I'm thinking mostly of like the Cambridge Springs, where they get a queen on a5, a bishop on b4, and a knight on e4. They all converge on your knight on c3, and they get a lot of pressure. And in those lines, it is sometimes possible to play the move rook to c1. Uh, this is an idea borrowed from the Cambridge Springs, but this isn't the most popular move here. It should be understood that you are sacrificing a pawn because of queen takes a2. Uh, the knight's in a pin, so you can't take the queen. But there's still, white should have decent compensation. He plays bishop d3, and the, the game continues. But knight g to e2, this is the, the main move here. And now another move that, that might scare you as white, bishop to f5. OK, so now we're threatening some discoveries on the queen. We're threatening bishop takes g3 which would protect the bishop and un unveil a, an attack on the queen. So we got to be really careful here. But white is able to get away with the move, bishop to e5. And the best move here is just to castle. You have no good discoveries, even though it looks like you can take on c3. And we'll see after castling. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Here we go. So will these discoveries work? So we took a piece, we attacked your queen, and OK, if you don't take my knight, you know, you're losing your queen, but also I'm going to get a discovered check. 
But you can take the bishop, and after the knight moves somewhere, just move your king. And here, objectively, white should be very slightly better. But as you can see, this is a mess. Uh, both sides have weaknesses everywhere. You know, the king's on d1. Um, we got a lot of pressure over here on your king side. Nobody feels terrifically safe. So if you're into a really complicated, tricky sort of position, uh, the Nimzo with an early d5, if we just go back here, is, uh, is very playable. And it's worth looking at if you want some, some complications. And the fact that it's not as popular might make it a, a really good surprise weapon against certain opponents. All right. And so this uh, first game that we're going to look at today, this is the game between Alexander Morozovic versus Alexander Beliovsky from the uh, 2007 European Team Championship. So, okay, it started as a Nimzo, and it was the classical variation. And here black played the most popular move, which uh, is to castle. Okay. And yeah, both of these players are known for, you know, they're kind of their aggressive, uncompromising style. And this game didn't fail to disappoint us on that. So or it didn't fail to uh, leave us without the impression that they're, they're both in the mood for a nice fighting game. So this was a, a good one. OK, so I hope uh, you remember if, what was uh, White's plan here. If you just castle, how, let's see if we can just remember the, the basic plan here. What is, yeah, what does White play here? Did you know? Yeah, you, yeah. Was it? A3. Yeah, A3. Excellent. So we're going to pick up the, uh, the bishop pair here. If you play bishop e7, white just goes ahead and plays e4, and he gets an excellent position. So he gets the, the big center for, for really nothing. And hopefully you see what happens on bishop a5. Uh, white will just play b4 and c5 and, and trap the bishop. So you should take here. And we put our queen on c2 so that we didn't have to ruin our pawns. So you take back with the queen. All right. And now there's, uh, again, a little bit of a divide. Historically, the most popular was this move, b6, that was played in the game. The idea is simple enough. We're going to continue to battle for the e4 square, so we bring our bishop to the long diagonal to keep control over e4, because white's next move is to pin our knight. And OK, with the bishop on b7, we once again get to control the e4 square. Also possible, and a little bit different now, is d5. And this is not quite as sharp as it was before, because we've already gotten the bishop off the board. So you're not going to be able to put uncomfortable pressure on the c3 square. Um, but it does ask you know, a very interesting question of black, uh, or sorry, of white. Black is saying, OK, I'm going to take this, and then you might have to take back with your queen, which c4 is not where you want a queen. That's where you want a bishop. Because now black will play you know, b6 and bishop a6 and attack your queen, and sometimes make it hard for you to a uh, castle over here. But OK, the other options aren't very great either. You know, we can take this, but then again, we'll be undoubling the pawns and liberating this bishop. So that's not exactly what you want to do either. Um, yeah, you don't want to play e3 for the same reasons as before. I mean, now you're trapping in your bishop on c1. Uh, so we'll take a look. You know, so the main moves here are bishop to g5 or knight f3. Those are the, the two main choices. And black's plan was to take here. And now you're going to take back with your queen. OK, so hopefully we remember black's plan here. He's going to play b6. He's going to play bishop a6. And you know, it's going to, he's going to make sure. So if at some point you move your e pawn after bishop a6, he'd be able to take your, your bishop and prevent you from castling. So that's part of his point. Uh, white plays you know, sort of a normal move. We want to get the bishop out before we play e3 and bishop to a6. So if you just play a calm move, like queen to c2, for example, now black will just continue with knight to d7 and get a good game you know, after he plays the move c5. So white here should play the move queen to a4, which prevents this knight from making the move that he wants to play. So now you're, you're keeping the knight stuck on b8. And white tends to get a, a good position. The main line goes c5. You take. This creates a nice weakness that you can, you can later attack. Uh, you attack the queen. She attacks your pawn. You can take and protect your pawn. And there's a lot of games that will, in such a position, end the following way. So be ready to, to be underwhelmed here. You check. You attack the pawn. You check. You attack the pawn. All right. That's the famous game Carlson Kramnik. And it's you know like 20 other games that have been played. So that's a common way to play for a draw. Um, it is quite a, a solid way for black to play. 
But we'll get back to the, uh, the main course here, and we'll look at the main move, b6. Again, we're going to put our bishop on b7, controlling e4. OK? This is the move white always wants to play, because then he can play the move e3 and get the rest of his minor pieces out. And bishop to b7. And here again, there's a, a parting of the ways. White can pick from two different moves. The most popular move is actually to play f3, which would be really nice for white if black allows us to play e4. Then f3 makes a lot of sense. And f3 is a move that you, you play often in the Nimzo, you know, because you want to control the e4 square. But uh, black can meet this with the move d5. So he kicks your bishop away, plays d5. And if ever you take on d5, he's taking back with a pawn. And it's going to be hard for you to play e4 without seriously weakening your position. So the main line goes e3. And OK, you reach some position like this without the queens. And OK, I mean, you can play this way. This is certainly a respectable enough way to play the game. But uh, it's, it's really comfortable for black. You know, there's nothing you know, terrible for him. He should be quite happy. Which is why a lot of people have switched to the move e3 with a very unusual plan. So you probably won't see it right away if you've never seen it before. So we'll check it out in the game. Uh, I don't want to give his plan away just yet. We'll talk about it in just a second. Black's plan is to play d6 and knight b to d7. This is what he's going to do against basically anything white tries here. And from there, he'll play for one of the breaks, either c5 or e5. So white is waiting to see you know, how is black going to play in the center. Now, a move that you might find unusual if you've never seen this position before. Uh, obviously, you can play f3 and kind of transpose into f3 lines. But after d6, knight e2, which you're putting a knight in front of your bishop. So what's the, what's the point of this? Is this amateur hour at the club? Uh, it seems like something you might see next door. But the point is, he's going to play queen to c2, you know, for getting more control over e4, and knight to c3. So his plan is to, you know, fight for e4. The battle for e4 is not over, so it's going to keep going, and it's going to be a theme for the, the entire game here. Uh, so that's what his plan is. I mean, Black's plan was to develop his knight, and we're going to see, is he going to play c5, e5? Uh, we're going to know a little bit about his plan on the next move. Queen to c2, and he decides he'll play c5. And here, it's handy to know a lot about different pawn structures. So white is thinking here, uh, if black ever takes here, and you can take back with a piece, meaning you're going to leave your pawn here on e3, you're going to get a hedgehog style formation, which is what white is trying to achieve here. It does look a bit awkward and clumsy to have to take back with your e-pawn. So he's thinking to himself, I really want to be able to take back with a piece on d4, but I don't want it to be my knight because my knight's going to c3. So he plays the move rook to d1. So if you take my d4 pawn, I'm taking back with a rook. And that will happen in just a second. OK, but first, black gets his uh, queen to c7. And now we get our, our plan. We got our knight all the way to c3. And we got control over e4. So all right. Now he takes, white takes back, and after a6, you get sort of the classical hedgehog formation. But unlike uh, the Sicilians, where you, you see the structure a little bit more frequently, the white pawn is on e3, not e4. So this makes a big difference, because since there's not a pawn on e4, white will sometimes be able to put a piece on e4. So I mean, the, the most likely contender here is this knight. Maybe he'll get to go to e4 later in the future. So we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, all right, so after a6, white kind of has an uncomfortable problem. This is the obvious piece that he needs to get developed next. But if he moves, the g2 pawn is going to be under attack. And you know, known for taking a little bit of, of a risk, uh, he decides, OK, if you want my g2 pawn, you can have it. But taking immediately is a mistake. So. We'll take a look at that. If you take here, we get our rook on the g file. So we're hoping for a compensation for the pawn in the form of g file pressure. And now, after the bishop goes either to h3 or stays on the natural diagonal, where it still controls e4, white can now play the move bishop to h6. And if you have to play g6 and lose an exchange, 
then this probably wasn't uh, the correct way to play. But even if you play knight to e8, white has a tactic here. So we'll see who's the, who's the tactical wizard in the audience. What would white play in this position? It's white to play here. There's a tactic. Yeah. All right. This might work. So yeah, so if they take. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, looks, looks pretty good. So what's that? Yeah, and yeah, also possible is taking first with the bishop and then yeah, swinging the rook over. This too is, is very powerful. So you got to be careful here as black. And OK, I, I assumed he, he saw that. So he played the move h6. So do you want to cash in your, your two bishops advantage here and just take the knight and then get castled? Or do you want to take the risk and, uh, and say, fine, take my g-pawn, open the g-file? So in the game, he played bishop to h4, which is the more aggressive way to play. And black took the pawn. So good, you're up a pawn. Uh, is this enough compensation? Is the rook going to be active enough along the g-file for you to get compensation for a pawn? So, and then he makes sort of an interesting decision with his bishop. Uh, he goes to h3. I think I would have stayed on the natural diagonal um, where I'm, you, stay, you keep control over e4, which would prevent the next move. But he went to h3, and sometimes you know, he's going to go back and defend. He can attack our queen, and he can even back the bishop up to defend the g-file. But white now found uh, a way to make use of the fact that he does own the, the e4 square, knight to e4. OK. So black took, and white took back with a queen. And I think there's something here black must have missed, because uh, white has a, a threat here that I guess he didn't see. So we'll see, we'll see the threat. I'll let you guys try to find it on the, the next move here. But with the queen here, our big plan is you know, to get the queen over to the g file. We can shoo the bishop away. We can get on the g file somewhere, and we can make some threats along this file. And black des decided to play uh, bishop to f5. Knight to e5 would prevent the, the threat from coming that uh, he didn't see here. So I'll let you guys play the next two moves here for white. What is, your queen is attacked, so what are you going to do about it? Some people are standing up. This position is so exciting. Yeah. Queen g2. Excellent, excellent. Queen g2, right, with the threat of checkmate. So wonderful. Uh, he stopped you. And now what did white play? You get, what's the very next move? You got it too? Yeah, bishop e7. Um, so let's see. So bishop e7, that was what was played in the game. So yeah, we see in this position here, had he played knight to e5, the queen would be preventing the bishop from entering. And OK, and the knight can even go back and defend if necessary. So OK. So it's, yeah, so it's strange. I don't know how he, he allowed this to happen. But after bishop to e7, you got some serious problems. You're either going to have to give back the pawn and you know, let white get sort of a crushing position, or you can give up the exchange. He decided to give up the exchange, which is the more dynamic way to play. Uh, if you just you know, let him take your pawn here, you just the material is equal again. But white has a really dominant position. All of his pieces uh, make a lot of sense. And he can play h4, h5. He can play bishop, h5. He's got all sorts of moves and threats. And it's very uncomfortable for black, which is why he decided, sorry, after bishop to e7, to give up the exchange. And he played the move d5. OK, he's hoping for some activity, blow up in the center. Maybe you know, something, something crazy will happen. Because you know, the white king is still sitting on e1. But uh, white takes the exchange, and black takes back with the knight. OK. So now uh, he has to find another attacking move here. So he wants to get rid of this bishop, because if the bishop moves, he takes on g7. Awesome. h4, right? Excellent. And now's a, a good time to test your defensive skills as well. So not only is white attacking, but uh, black here has to find a very accurate move just to stay in the game. And the, the thing is, he needs to defend the g7 square. So you might want to pause your video, see if you can find it at home. 
But uh, here he played queen to e5. OK, so you can play h5 here. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the queen is now protecting g7. That's his, uh, his big point here. All right, so what are you going to do as white? Well, here white also points out another inconvenient you know, pat, uh, point in this position. After the move queen to g3, we realize even if you trade into the end game, this position is still really good for white. So normally when you're attacking, you don't want to trade queens. But here the end game is very nice for white. So if you take, we'll take back with the rook. And then whatever move you make, uh, we can take on c4 first. But it, we're going to play rook to g4 with the threat of h5. And this is really, really uncomfortable for you. So yeah, h5 is going to come, and you're not going to be happy about it. So OK. So he decides, I'll keep the queens on the board. I don't want that to happen. h5. And the bishop gets out of the way. So black is you know, sort of successfully defended against the attack. There's, there's no longer the big attack going on. So we've been focused a lot on the king's side. But you'll notice there's a, a lot of things you know, hanging around over here that white can exploit. So he went right in, queen to c7. And it's, it's tough. It's, you know, you're not really going to be able to defend your, your b pawn. Because even if you decide to go into this end game, it's also not good for you. Because we just trade. Uh, we take on d5. And we're going to pick up this pawn. And this is going to be a very good end game for white. So he decided to play a bit more actively, b5. And now a very accurate move from white. So this is good. There's several good moves here. But he plays the most accurate, which is queen to c6. And you'll notice now that the queens are lined up on the sixth rank, which will sometimes matter. It means this pawn can't move away and capture something. Also, the immediate threat is to take the rook. And when the mo rook moves away, now you can see the whole queen side is just going to fall apart here. So white first takes on d5. You can't you know, take back, because uh, if you ever move here, right, you're just going to lose your queen. So it's tough. It's tough. He decides to get his king out of the pin. OK, very sensible. And we just start gobbling up the pawns. So OK, the queen is coming in. Is she going to get enough counterplay? It's hard to see. But uh, OK, now maybe you are thinking about taking on d5. So white pushes. Black comes in. OK, we, we defend. And OK, this should be a, a relatively simple technical task from this point. Um, e5, he moves the rook. Uh, here comes the rook. The rook's coming to c1. But it doesn't really even matter. So OK, now even here, you, know, you can obviously you can take this and then win a pawn. But, uh, even this is insufficient, because I think even, even this move, you can block with the bishop, but this will force the trade of queens. So in a position like this, you would have to trade the queens. So I guess he realized in this position, you know, OK, he's, even the threats that I think I have, I, I don't get to do. Um, so it didn't, didn't last much longer. And OK, one more move was played here, bishop to d3. And all right, black had had enough. So yeah, this is not good. He's going to win more material. And you know everything's falling apart. And he's, you know, OK. <clears throat> so a very good uh, demonstration there by White of one of the, the key plans of maneuvering the, the second knight over to c3. And a nice attacking game that uh, didn't work out very well for black. So that's what happens when you give up control over e4. All right, and we got one more game. And as promised, this is the, the very exciting peace sack line. Uh, we'll flip the board around. And this is the game. Li Chao versus Wang Yui. So this was in, the, in, a, in a Chinese tournament. So both of these players are, are above 2,700 today. And this was played back in 2011. OK, so we get the Nimzo, and we're, we're seeing it from Black's point of view. We got the classical. Castling's the main move. We're going to look in this game at the move c5, attacking the center. And you know we don't really want to defend it with e3 and blocking the bishop. So you're playing the Nimzo. You do always want to consider d takes c5. And here the main move is just a castle. And uh, we'll just look at this line for a second. And OK, you get some, some playable position for both sides. It's you know certainly there's a reason it's the most popular. Uh, also, it's funny. I analyzed this move, which is not the best move. 
with somebody that I used to teach, and he was very close to a 1200 level. And you know, every time he'd play this, I'd say, you know, that's not a very good move. And he'd be like, yeah, I know. You don't, you don't want to move the bishop twice in a row. But apparently, if you play in the under 1200 section of every tournament, your opponents just can't resist playing bishop to g5 in this position, which is a well-known mistake. So I mean, what does black play here? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, bishop takes f2, and after the king takes, uh, knight g4, and you pick up the bishop. It's also nice that you've kind of dislocated the king, so black's up a pawn, and white can't castle, so this is a, a very good success for him. So if you play in the under 1200 section, yeah, you, you should take on c5 here, I guess. That's the, that's the lesson. But the most aggressive and sharpest way to play is knight to a6. The point is we're going to go pick up the c-pawn with our knight instead of our bishop. So white goes through with the normal plan. OK, you, he gets the bishop pair. And now you take on c5 with the knight. So here, um, he can play b4. You know, you don't want to go back to a6. That's no home for your knight. But if you go in, as was played in the game, you'll notice this guy he doesn't have a whole lot of squares that he can go to. Uh, in this position, even though he's attacking the queen, you know, the only other safe square he has is d6. So white can move his queen and take control of the d6 square with bish uh, queen to d4. So now we're threatening to play f3 and just trap the knight. So OK, for one more move, you can play d5. Now you don't have time to uh, play f3 because I have the d6 square again. But white can shut the door with the move c5. Um, OK, it's a very good grandmaster. So what is he doing? Is, is, is knight going to get trapped in there? And the, the whole point of black's play here is he's going to get enough counterplay and open up some files on the queen side and get an attack going and hope that justifies his piece. So b6. And OK, f3. So you're going to lose your knight. You have time to take here and open a file. OK, so I don't have time to take your knight. I'll take your knight on the next move. So here, what are you going to do? Well, we can delay the, uh, them taking our knight for one more move and get a piece into the action. Check. Yeah, check. Right. Every, yeah, the audience loves a good check. Uh, yeah, so a very good move. Obviously, white doesn't want to play bishop d2 because that just allows our knight to take it. Also, king d1 you know, not only allows you to take here on c5, but you have an even stronger threat. You know. So, uh, so those moves don't make sense. The only move that makes sense here is queen to b4. And we're about to lose a piece, so we're not about to trade queens. And you bring your queen back, and they take your piece. Um, and OK, how, does, how is black really getting enough compensation here for a knight? It's, it's tricky. Well, he has a lot of forcing moves coming up. Uh, here's a nice forcing move. We get to attack the queen, gain a tempo there. Queen to e5 is you know, coming up pretty soon. The knight's going to jump into one of these two squares here. And he's going to get a big attack before white develops any of his, his minor pieces. And so the first move here, rook to b8. And white played queen to a4 check, which looks kind of like a mistake. But it's actually the, the main move here. Because doesn't this just allow bishop to d7 gaining another tempo on the queen? It's, uh, you know, if she just has to move back, then this is you know, not what white wants to do. You're letting him get another piece into the attack. So white was banking on the tactical move, c6. And OK, what's, what's the point? I mean, what if I just take this? What was white intending to play here? This one's a tricky one. I mean, what if I just take it? This one, yeah, this one's a lot trickier, so yeah, you really want to take your time here. All right. Yeah, good job, Dennis. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Bishop to f4. Uh, this was the plan. So you take my queen, I take your queen. You take my bishop, I take your bishop. And this was the tactical point that he was counting on in this position. And so here, black is actually in a, a lot of trouble. So he's, he's not going to be able to justify his peace sacrifice if you end up trading some material here. So well done. Very well done. So instead, he played queen to e5, a double piece sacrifice. So what's this? I take it. 
you know? OK? So that's two pieces you've given up now. Uh, you, really, you got your queen, your knight, and your rook. Is that really enough? I mean, white hasn't moved any of his pieces, but that is two pieces. And here, we're attacking the rook. Um, so he made what's actually a blunder, but it seems like the most logical move. He attacks you, so you move. But he's actually losing now. So we'll, we'll look at that. The, the, the best way to play is to take on a7. But now, um, you know, your threat here is to make a queen and then to take this rook with check, which would sort of you know, end the attack whenever this, this queen is out of there. So uh, OK, the check. And black here has nothing better than just to repeat. So this line has actually been worked out to a draw, um, which is why perhaps it's not covered in a whole lot of places. But you know, your opponent really has to know a lot of stuff to be able to even get a drawn position, which is not what you strive for when you play with white. So in the game, just back it up. Rook to a2. So OK, there's a lot of, a lot of moves to consider here. Um, you, know, you can think rook b1, queen c3, a knight move. And so here a knight move was played. But be careful, because one is better than the other. So there's a big difference. So we'll see if you can work it out, because OK, they both, they both look pretty good, right? But, but one is better than the other. And that move, uh, sorry, hmm, you do throw the check in. I apologize. Um, OK, so it's this position, actually, that uh, the knight moves. And OK, they both look really good, right? Do you know the difference? Yeah, why g4? OK, yeah, you can play here. Um, another thing is you can also create a, a flight square here. And so the real big difference uh, with this move, though, too, is now in a lot of positions, you're threatening knight to e3. So that's, that's the big difference. Um, and if you, yeah, if you play it this way, black still probably has the advantage here, which is the nice thing. So even if you make a mistake, you're, you're still you know, in the lead. But yeah, even stronger is knight to g4. Because eventually, you know, you have the sorry e3 square. All right. So there. Which also, you know, we got a we made a little threat here, a little threat. So queen takes a7, defending the f2 square from really, really, really far away. So if you're playing like a blitz game, maybe you'll you won't notice and you'll blunder your knight. It'd be embarrassing. Um, OK, but uh, okay, he was a pretty good player here. So how to keep up the pressure? There's the move, rook to b1. OK, threatening checkmate. Here white delays the inevitable. He makes a queen, which is interesting. White can promote to any piece he wants, and the best move for black is to take it. But he made a queen. A serious inaccuracy, right, Danny Machuka coming in the door? Because if you make a knight, he doesn't have to take you. So maybe he won't. And then you would win. But by making a queen, you force black to play his only move. How could he play so bad? Yeah, I know. Yeah, so you take it. Check. Uh, please take my rook, because I'm checkmating you in several different ways. But OK, check. And now we don't want to draw. We're, we're about to checkmate him. So we run away with the king. OK? You know, a bit precarious. And now after the move e5, uh, we really don't want to take that with anything. Our knight and queen are in perfect position. If you take with a the king, then you know, knight f3 is going to come with check. So just sidestep it all. OK, you just get out of the way. And it's tough. We're threatening lots of stuff here. You got to defend c1. So work to c2. Knight to e3. So this is you know, the big difference. The knight does get to e3. And now white plays a novelty and the only move. So you didn't know this was all theory. Um, so before this, there was another game between people significantly lower rated than this game. And in this position, white resigned. So, but in this game, white played the novelty. Queen takes knight, the only move. So OK, so you're losing. Some stuff, but OK, you got three pieces for a queen. 
Um, normally, that's you know very good, but it, it's not great when all of black species are strangling you. Then it you know the piece quality is is substantially different. Uh, so blacks black still got them good here. So the knight came out, and his last piece enters the game. Okay, here comes White's attack. H4. You know he's gonna he's gonna play H5, but uh, we can safely ignore it. H5, and now White gets to make a big threat. G4. You know, okay, here comes G5, and then you got to give me your queen, and then you get checkmated. But uh, he gets a, a there's a very very nice way to finish this game. So it's great. He's played you know a fantastic game so far, and he's gonna finish it off with another beautiful combination here. So. For the last time, I'll, uh, I'll challenge the audience to see if you can find, you know, it's not the only continuation, but it's uh, the prettiest, definitely. So what did, uh, what did Black play here? Rook to e3. Okay, this is a very, very pretty move. Um, you said, who said no? Like, nope. Take it. Aww. 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 <clears throat> so that's the right idea, not the right execution. <clears throat> yeah. Rook H2. H2? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so you're saying I can't take it? This is interesting. I don't know. Maybe I can defend like this. Eh. I mean, it still still looks pretty bad for me. So that's that's interesting. But yeah, the the idea here was correct. Only we missed the fact that we you know, we're pinned here. So get get rid of the pin. Rook takes c1. Uh, a very very nice way to finish. Only one move. And now, hopefully, we see it. Rook to d3. And this is where the game came to an end. So yeah, if you, if you take, we take here, we win some material, and the resulting end game should be an easy technical task for the, the very strong Chinese player. So yeah, this was a fantastic game. Uh, you sacrifice two pieces, and yet the best line white can do is uh, to get a draw. But it's very complicated, and you know, you're playing with white, you're not trying to get a draw, especially when you're two pieces up. So a truly fantastic game, it's a, it's a wonderful one. And I have some good news for some people. It's possible that I'll have a, a large stretch here where not only will I be here on Monday night, I'll be here on Tuesday night doing beginner breakdown. So uh, yeah, there could come a time where I do several beginner breakdowns in a row. Mike Cummer's coming up with his uh, season finale. Very exciting. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. Uh, so I want to take beginner breakdown back to its roots. I want to get some of your guys' games so we can analyze them. Um, the whole point of beginner breakdown is we can bring in your games and, and we'll analyze them. So if you do have games you want analyzed, you can send them uh, either in the YouTube comments, you can put them there, or you can send it to info at stlouischessclub.org. And Saint is spelled out. So yeah, if you want to send them in with any comments or questions that you might have about certain positions, that'd be fun. And maybe we'll take a look at those in the, the next couple of weeks. Uh, and as always, you know, send in your submissions for the other openings that you'd like to see coming up here really soon. Uh, hit like, share, subscribe, and thank you guys for coming.